Hey there, Dungeon Acid. Last video we talked about how to make Theater of the Mind dungeons, and uh, one aspect of that that I didn't really get into a whole um, a lot of detail over is terrain. Um, and terrain, making terrain more interesting is very cool, it's very fun, and it really enhances your games. And it also is easier and creates more of a fun time for your players uh, through Theater of the Mind, because... Uh, uh, you can describe terrain that's just absurd or, uh, you know, otherwise uh, abstractly very fun and and engaging that would be difficult to graph out on a battle mat or to make and, you know, uh, as practical little terrain pieces. So, um, you know, what are these types of terrain? How do you do it? How do you implement it? That's what I want to talk about in this video. So, uh, terrain, uh, theater of the mind terrain, making terrain more interesting. There are a few ways you can go about doing that. There are a few different types of terrain, because the basic type is something to climb over, basically, or hide behind. Those are the two basic ways you interact with terrain. So a hill is, is a terrain piece. It is, a, uh, it is something you can uh, hide behind, a crate, right? Um, something you can use to stand up on and be taller or hide behind or uh, otherwise interact with them very mundane basic ways and there's nothing wrong with that type of terrain but if you want to mix it up there are a few things you can do first is of course difficult terrain difficult terrain um, is stuff that is hard to walk through hard to maneuver through um, it's not going to pose uh, any type of danger as of yet but um, it can make a battle a bit more interesting and uh, as well as just exploration through a dungeon more interesting. So um, a, a water feature, a big rushing uh, like river that you have to cross over um, is something that is, uh, you, know, you have to make people think about how best to cross it. Um, or just water in general, fl a flooded room that's flooded up to waist high while it isn't dangerous will make that terrain a bit more interesting. You know, everyone's walking slower, um, but there's added benefit. Well, what if you grab an enemy and hold them down under the water? Or um, what if, is there anything we can float on? Or are the halflings in the party doing all right? Do they need to go on someone's shoulders? Uh, are they swimming? Like what's the, you know, where's everyone at in that regard? So difficult terrain. Um, and it doesn't have to be water. I mean, obviously you, you have pretty much any weather, um, type can give you difficult terrain. Um, hard winds, you know, in a room uh, is, can be difficult terrain. Anything that impedes your movement and will otherwise make them ch change how they think about moving through this room or this terrain. The second one is a, another uh, easy thing to throw in there to spice it up, and that's skill check terrain. So the skill check terrain is similar to difficult terrain, and it could also be uh, difficult terrain. However, it is also terrain that um, one must pass some sort of skill check in order to uh, go through, else face some sort of, uh, you know, punishment. Uh, could be damage, could be you're moved to a different area, could be that you, like, lose a turn. Um, but basically, this is stuff like a wall that they must scale. Um, so, like, if they walk into the room and there's a 15-foot um, or there's like a hole in the wall up about 15 feet where a bunch of goblins are shooting arrows down at them. Well, unless they have ranged weaponry, you know, the close combat fighter is going to need to get up there. So climbing that wall is a, is a style of skill check terrain. Jumping over lava. The floor is lava is a great example of skill check terrain because you're pretty much going to be requiring acrobatics checks for people to jump across this lava. Um, Jumping over holes, uh, you know, um, swimming, uh, like let's say there are two rooms separated by a section of, you know, underwater. Um, well, you know, swimming underneath that and not passing out, that could be a skill check. Um, just really, you can look through the skills, the skill list, and design um, the skill check terrain from the, uh, you know, backwards, essentially. So you could take something like Arcana and be like, all right, well, I want to make an Arcana skill check uh, type of terrain. So I'm imagining it's a some sort of magical pillar carved out of uh, 
uh, glittery marble, and um, it, you know, has a series of rotating arcane runes on it, and um, the runes dictate, you know, what tiles you can step on without triggering these adverse magical effects. So, you know, you need to be able to recognize runes at a moment's notice um, and step on them, almost like a quick time event in a video game. And that would be, you know, an Arcana-based skill check terrain. Or uh, you could do, it's another, you know, one you wouldn't, you might not think of, animal handling. Uh, some, there could be, you know, a, uh, a pit of, of ravenous hyenas that you're having to jump over and then let's say you fall in and then you're like, all right, well, you, know, you might need to roll an animal handling check or else they're, they're going to pounce on you. And maybe they just pounce on them anyway. Um, here's, here's a better animal handling terrain check. It, it, a, a large gap in a dungeon with a huge chasm beneath it, but these large, seemingly docile, bat-like creatures fly around the cavern. And uh, if you can, you know, try and tame one or jump on its back, Avatar style, that's Avatar the James Cameron movie, not the better Nickelodeon cartoon, um, but, uh, and, and fly across, right? So there's a skill check terrain. So skill check terrain really will add a more interesting option for how to interact with the world, uh, for, with the room you're in, with the encounter. All right, another type, number three, is effect terrain. Now, effect terrain is similar, again, to its predecessor. It's similar to a skill check terrain, except that it doesn't give you a yes or no of can you pass a skill check to interact with it. It just is automatically set to this is the effect it has on you. So it's uh, so you, let's say you walk into a room and it has some sort of weird magical effect um, permeating throughout the entire room where um, the longer you stay in there, the older you get. And so you're having people roll, it's like you gain D4 years of age um, each minute you stand in there. But you have something in there that requires them to be in there for a certain amount of time um, to get something or do something, complete a task. So effect terrain can be very fun, very interesting, because you can really go nuts with it. I would just look at the character sheet and just be like, what can I mess around with? What can I change? Right? Um, there could be a strange altar that while you're within 10 feet of it, um, you have plus two to your strength stat, um, but um, you are driven to bloodlust, and it, the altar is like a fountain overflowing with blood or something like that. Um, so these effects can really go go wild, um, and uh, it will mark that piece of terrain in the player's minds as a very special, like, like oh, do you remember that room that had the crazy blood altar? Like, that place is crazy, um, and far better than... Uh, if you just had a room with an altar, but it had no magical effect, no no uh, kind of effect terrain, it was just set dressing, essentially. It's an altar. It's like, well, fighting next to an altar is about the same as fighting next to a lake or fighting next to a cliff. It's, you know, as long as we're not interacting with the terrain, it's just all we're, you know, it's all the same. So having those kind of mechanical effects tied to the terrain make them stand out and will, I think, you know, also increase the narrative potential as well. Um, and, uh, the, that effect can be, um, adverse, but it can also be beneficial. Um, so it can be boosting terrain that they want to be near, like a healing fountain that like, you know, heals their hit points. And it, that would give you an excuse to put, pit them up against a much, you know, deadlier monster than they're used to, perhaps like a frog hemoth. Um, and, and then, you know, because they're near this fountain or that it's within the dungeon with them, it will help, um, ease that burden. Um, so that's number three, effect terrain. Um, number four is um, elevation. And these aren't really in any particular order. So elevation is kind of mundane compared to what we were talking about before. But um, it is uh, an important thing to consider because when you're doing theater of the mind, elevation can really bring a sense of tactics and, um, and style intrigue to a combat that fighting on a flat ground just doesn't. Um, and it's a lot easier theater of the mind uh, uh, to portray it than it is on the tabletop because, like, if you're drawing a map and you're like, all right, well, this place, and you have to, like, mark it. There we go. Sorry. Oh, my camera messed up. Um, you have to, like, mark it and be like, all right, well, this is 40 feet up or this is 30 feet up, and then people, you know, who uh, are looking at the map might be confused. So that... 
um, the describing that elevation in a narrative sense can really bring it across and be like, well, you know, you follow the cavern uh, until it opens up into a, a, a massive open well in a cave. It's like a hundred feet wide with a hundred feet deep. And it's, uh, and there are, it's pockmarked with all these little cavern inlets all across it, like a beehive. And in each one, there are little goblins doing all sorts of goblin, uh, type things. But as you approach the goblins, you know, we'll say D20 goblins, uh, near you, uh, notice you. And so now you have these goblins who are climbing down the little hive honeycomb, um, cave style wall to go get them. Some are shooting arrows from afar. The, the whole place is this giant open chasm, so they can't walk directly to anything. This is all elevated terrain, lower and higher. How do you interact with it? What spells can you use? Um, you know, it really opens up the, the dialogue uh, with the players about, like, how do I meaningfully interact with this, uh, this battleground and uh, with this dungeon room than if it was just, oh, it's a 40 foot by 40 foot room and there are five goblins. Because in, on the tabletop, while if you're doing little squares, that might be enough, right? You should be like, all right, well, here's the room, here are all the goblins, and it's pretty engaging because you see the miniatures, you're like, all right, cool, I'll move this, all right, well, you can get a flank on that guy, you can do this. But in the in theater of the mind, you can do so much more. Um, and so it's not worth it to just say, well, it's a 40 foot by 40 foot room with five goblins, and yeah, they're arrayed pretty much normally in a square shape or a triangle shape or whatever. And uh, then people are like, all right, well, I attack the closest one. Um, so elevation can add that that um, level of fun, and it doesn't have to be within a dungeon. Elevation is a key factor in uh, battles on the over you know overworld uh, uh, above ground, with hills, with mountains sides. Um, like if you're if you are walking um, a, a trail as adventurers uh, next to a mountainside and uh, perhaps a tall tree on the other side, and there are goblins or some sort of enemy that set up a base between those, them shooting down at you, and there's no obvious way to go get up and get them, that's far more of a dangerous encounter. And it's you know, more likely what they would do to uh, ambush travelers than just wait, pop out in the road and be like, give us your gold. And you know, it's like, dude, we're four people dressed in like heavy armor and carrying magical artifacts, and you're like a bunch of scrubs. Did you really think this is a good idea? But those scrubs might be a, a bit more uh, brave if they have the uh, the tactics of uh, terrain on their side. Um, so elevation on their side, maybe um, some sort of trap that they've laid. Um, elevation also goes hand to hand with cover, um, as we talked about before, um, which is uh, my fifth type of interesting terrain. Cover does not have to be, um, you know, like. Uh, as dull as it sounds, you really can use cover to ev evoke the world, to evoke the feeling of the game you're trying to portray. And that's what I try and, and, and do in my Theater of the Mind games. And so I wouldn't say, I wouldn't describe it as cover, I would describe it as, you know, uh, some sort of, uh, something more evocative. Perhaps if you're going for a grim, gritty, battlefield type um, campaign, you could literally hide behind the walls of bodies and just like you're you're scrunching down to make yourself so small as a target as possible and you get cover bonus from that. Um, the blasted out ruins of an ancient Im uh, imperial structure. But what, what does it look like? What are, you know, uh, what are the carvings along this this uh, ancient structure? Um, why is it here? Um, those type of things can make cover a bit more interesting than just the dull, I'm in cover. Um, you know, but cover is important, um, and it, it does, it, 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 anything to make your players feel like they're taking a bit of a more tactical influence into the battle. So if you have ranged, ranged people, they're going to want to get behind cover, you know, like rangers will want to hide behind trees, uh, um, casters will, will feel better if they are, uh, you know, hidden from the battlefield in some way. And uh, you can go nuts with the cover. Perhaps there's a body of a dead giant, and its rib cage is sticking up through the ground, and they're taking cover be between the uh, the exposed giant ribs. You know, a cover can be interesting. And the last type of uh, terrain is damaging terrain. This is kind of like an effect terrain, 
Um, but it differs in one way, which is that um, the uh, damaging terrain will pretty much, you know, be uh, like impassable to most normal people versus the effect terrain was like, if there's a negative effect walking through, you know, effect terrain. Um, it's you, like a calculated decision of, all right, can I pay that cost to walk through it? But a damaging terrain is something that you're like, I can't go that way unless I have some special magic or some special thing. So a river of lava that's too far to jump. Um, a chasm that drops down into nothingness with no sign of what's on the other side. Uh, these types of things are ways, they're essentially, essentially walls. They prevent the players from going that direction. But they are walls that build on the mystery and, uh, and build on the world in a better way than, oh, you come to a dead end. So for instance, let's say you're building a dungeon and uh, it's a very small dungeon. You really just want them to come across a monster and then find the treasure chest. But you don't want it to, just to be as linear as that. So you have it, they come into the door, they see a clue of what kind of monster it might be, perhaps a discarded carcass um, of uh, something the monster ate. Then they come to a T intersection, left or right. Um, you have claw marks dragged uh, to the right, so maybe there's a clue that there's, there's something over there. And in fact, if they go right, they encounter the monster, and behind it, lo and behold, the treasure chest. Well, there's your dungeon, but you've given them a choice, a T-intersection, what is to the left? Well, if you're struck for time, you really don't have anything else, and you really just want this dungeon to be as simple, clear cut as possible, you could just put a dead end. You could put a cave in. Oh, you go to the left, and it's a cave in. There's, you know, nothing there. Well, that's kind of boring. Um, so what if instead of a cave-in, they come across a, you know, uh, wide open chasm. It opens up into this underdark chasm that's massive and there's expansive and there's no foreseeable floor at the bottom. Well, what are they going to do? If their levels, you know, if they're under seven levels, something like that, they're fairly low level characters and don't have access to like flying around. What are you going to do? Uh, we could climb down there, but that seems super dangerous, and we're on a quest doing something else, so we better leave it. And that sticks in their mind as they're like, well, sh you know, maybe that dungeon leads to the Underdark. Like, there's something to, to be explored there. Um, and it's damaging in the sense that, like, if you walk over it, you're going to fall into your death. <laughs> um, so this type of terrain is useful in that regard. Um, uh, but it's, you know, it's worth changing your dead ends and your, um, you know, ways you don't want the players to go for whatever reason into a damaging terrain that perhaps they can turn off later. For instance, a f field of lava coming out of this giant skull statue, um, but the behind the lava you see a big ornate door that's, you know, decorated with skulls. Well, they're going to wonder what's behind that door. They can't get to it. There's a field of lava in front of it. But they're like, what is behind that door? How do we get over there? They try and like think of different results, and they're like, no, we're too low level. There's nothing we can do to get over this lava. We'll have to leave it. But later on, they come across a lever, and they're like, what's this lever? They pull it. <laughs> Suddenly, the skull, the big skull where the lava is leaking out of, closes its mouth, and the field of lava slowly dissipates. And they're like, oh, that door is open to us now. Oh, man, we figured it out. So damaging terrain is useful um, in a lot of different ways. And really, you can go very cartoonish with it. Acid is a f another fun one, like to use, uh, heavily use of acid. You can go nuts, too. You can have just make up a substance, some weird gurgling black tar that if they touch it, they pull out their f hand again, and it's just bone. And uh, then it falls off, and they're like, oh, God. It's like, yeah, sorry, you, lose, you lost a finger for touching it. Um, and... Uh, and it can really add stuff. So I'm coming up on the 20 minute mark to cap it off. Thank you so much for watching this video. As a reminder, those six types of more interesting terrain that you can implement in your theater of the mind games, they are one, difficult terrain, two, skill check terrain, a specialized type of that difficult terrain, number three, effect terrain, um, number four, elevation, number five, cover, and number six, damaging terrain. Thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you like the videos and uh, roll on.